makes a big save. A lot of times that's all a goalie needs to kind of get the momentum started is a big save, get him fired up, fires up his defense. We'll see what Malvern does here on offense. First minute of action here. Again, Malvern prep, they get their first offensive look. Yeah, so if you're Malvern, again, you want to get the ball around here. Everybody get a touch. Uh, some early game jitters typically, so get everybody, all six guys on offense to touch the ball, move their feet, run around a little bit. Um, they're probably going to look for a good short stick matchup here out of the box, which they did, try to draw the slide. Uh-oh. That one just high and wide. Luke Kreshko back in net for LaSalle here today. That shot went just a bit high from the stick of Alexander Nikolic. Yeah, great look off ball there. Right in front they go. That's a goal. Malvern prep, Colin McGill, the senior. One head fake, and he beat Reshko. Yeah, you'll see the feed here from uh, Will Peden. I mean, this, this kid is an assist machine. He draws two quickly, backside to McGill, the lefty. All he has to do is catch, fake once, and finish. And it is 1-0 to Malvern Prep. 10.03 to go first quarter, just a couple minutes in. Yes, you have a freshman here for LaSalle at the faceoff X. They're going to rely heavily on him today, uh, Stevie Kelly. Yeah, Stevie Davis, number 34, the freshman. Ball pops up, and Malvern Prep's going to get control of it. Number 42 in there on the scoop, and up the field they come. Yeah, if you're LaSalle and, and Malvern starts winning faceoffs today, you got to watch out because – the game plan, again, we mentioned earlier, is to try to win faceoffs early, try to control the possession, slow the game down if you're LaSalle. But uh, if Malvern scores here, you know, maybe an early timeout for LaSalle to, to regroup. Here's Sheridan. Back behind the net, Malvern with some patience. Eric Spanos. Here's Peden drawing the double. Nikolic feeds back up top. That's Nicholas Potemski, the senior, takes it off to his left. Yeah, Potemski's going to Duke, Bob. Uh, it's nice to have a luxury of uh, basically a fourth attackman who would start on any other team at attack running midfield for this Malvern team. Potemski gets sized up there back behind the net. And LaSalle maybe trying to speed up Malvern just the slightest. Spanos back for Potemski. Another one in front, Reshko was there. Great uh, save by Reshko. And a flag's gonna come in, that's gonna go against number seven, Paul Jennings for the shove. Yeah, it's a questionable call. I think, uh, you know, Jennings probably did hit him from behind with possession, but those are one of those ones of the ref with the momentum you may let go, but they made the call. If you're LaSalle here now, you gotta pack it in at six on five against a very potent Malvern offense. And Mike, even in the even strength situations on each of the first two possessions. Malvern Prep found a way for a point-blank look right in front of the net. One was saved, one was not. And we find ourselves at one nothing. 8.30 to go first quarter. Yeah, even though it was a penalty, maybe a save like that gets Freshco going, similar to what the Malvern goal would get going there early. Another one in between. Another big save. There's Freshco. Another point-blank shot. He's two for three in that situation. Impressive. Another one flinged high and wide, and in the position was Potemski. The thing with Malvern, they got the rebound there. You know, three or four shots on goal with these guys. Uh, chances are they're probably going to score. But right now, Hareshka's holding it down. Eight minutes and counting here in the first. Another one, and that one's wide. A race to the end line, but Malvern prepped in position. So in the sport of lacrosse, it's the, it's the closest person to the ball when the ball goes out of bounds. Uh, that's, that's why you'll see the defender and the attackman race to the end line after a shot. What a save. Reshko is on fire early on, but a giveaway. Reshko finds himself outside the net quickly back in front. God, the sixth possession here by Malvern off of a off of a shot. 
And another great look there. He scores with the flag to boot at 7.29. You know, Hreshko can only do so much there. I think the kid made three saves. They missed the goal three times. That was their seventh shot on one possession. And again, we're going against the top five team in the country. Uh, they're going to score. So there was a penalty there. You'll see now we have a man down faceoff. So you'll notice that LaSalle at the faceoff X here has uh, Stevie Riley and one wingman. And you'll see Malvern has at the faceoff X uh, Pup Buno and two wingmen. So it's a three on two at the midfield uh, because of that man down penalty. Stevie Davis. And now a hold is going to be called LaSalle possession. Great job by the freshman. So Stevie's just going to run for his life here. Uh, it's six on five again. Malvern's still man up, even though LaSalle has the ball. They typically will double the ball with two long poles or have their sixth guy be a free safety. And LaSalle on the other end, milking the clock a little bit. Certainly if they get an opportunity offensively, great, but a giveaway. And that's, you know, we talked about Pup earlier. I mean, the kid's an absolute beast. Uh, Probably 6'3", 215, going to Penn State. Uh, teddy bear off the field, but you get between the lines, and uh, Pup's the guy you want to stay away from. And, uh, of course, a uh, Penn State graduate here. Excited to see what he does uh, under Jeff Tambroni and the Nittany Lions squad. Yeah, he'll do great. I think he'll get on the field early. Another great look right in front. Malvern Prep, they've had no shortages of looks in and around that blue crease, Mike. Yeah, I think they have eight shots already here in the first quarter, two goals. Uh, so Horeshko. Ah. A wind and fire. That's Eric Spanos. Again, if I'm LaSalle, maybe an early timeout here. Uh, it's 3 nothing. It looks like Robbie's going to let his team fight through it. Uh, but we talked about, you know, gaining possession and slowing the game down a little bit. You can't run this track meet with Malvern or you'll get beat big time. So Stevie Davis and, and early on, Mike, another important faceoff here. 3 nothing LaSalle trails. 6.30 to go, first quarter. Another and again. Ma another Malvern win. Wow, what a pickup that was by Andrew Kelly. Fantastic in traffic. A great look right in front. And a score. What a big time play by Andrew Kelly. He makes a tough ground ball in the middle of the field. Gets his head up, sees Huntley down the field there. Two or three fakes and Huntley finishes. Charlie Huntley gets the first goal of the afternoon for LaSalle, but Mike, you said it. It's all about that loose ball. And really a rare mistake from the Friars. An unforced error in the middle of the field. Yeah, they turned it over. You know, typically teams will clear it 90%. That may have been the 10% where they had a turnover. Kelly again picks up a tough ground ball, sticks his nose in there, head up quickly, gets his team a layup. 6-11 to play. First quarter action here on Bob Long Sports. LaSalle in white, Malvern Prep in the navy blue. And another fight for the ground ball. And it's out of bounds to LaSalle. There's those 50-50 balls. You just have to fight, fight your butt off and, and try to win those again. Another possession, another chance to score for LaSalle. A top five team in the country has made its way to LaSalle High School here today in the Malvern Prep Friars. And LaSalle with state ambitions of their own, something that Malvern Prep will not be able to play for coming out of the Interact. Both teams with a ton to play for, both teams with a ton of talent. You're looking at some of the best in Pennsylvania today, Mike. Yeah, anytime a PIA school goes up against an Interact school, nobody cares about the state championship that they can't play in. This is what it's all about on the field today. The kids always know who the winner is at the end. Lazaz crosses field, good looking shot. That one might have caught a piece of the pipe. Also there was Doherty. Great save. We said and uh, we have heard from the head coach of Malvern Prep that Joseph Doherty is going to get a lot of time here today, but about halfway through we're going to see number 41, Chris O'Grady. A goaltender, a goalkeeper platoon, Mike. Do you see a lot of that? You know, I don't see a lot of it. It's an interesting strategy by Malvern. Again, with the loaded talent that they have here, they can go from Doherty to O'Grady. Uh, one's a righty, one's a lefty, so there's some psychology there on the shooters. All of a sudden, the next goal, he changes hands. People may not recognize it. Um, we're in a situation right now, Bob, there's actually a flag down about 80 yards down the field. 
So Malvern gets the ball back no matter what. That's why they took a high-risk play there. 441 to play. It's 3-1. Malvern prep over LaSalle. And this is the third penalty in the first quarter, which again is rare. They're on pace for 12 penalties this game already, which would be high. Uh, again, if you're LaSalle, you know, I, I just get worried being a man down against the potent offense. All six players on the field right now, I believe, are Division I commits. So you'll see them bang the ball around. Uh, Hareshko's got to be ready for anything. And another goal, Malvern Prep. On fire early on, Will Peden, number 12. Yeah, Peden's typically known for the assist, and you see him step down from about 12 yards. If you're LaSalle, that's probably the shot you can live with. So a 12-yard shot from Peden versus a one-yard shot from somebody like McGill or Spanos. Uh, you hope the goalie makes the save there, so you can live with those. Four minutes, 29 seconds to play, and it's 4-1 Malvern Prep. Bob Long, Mike Morsell. Thanks, everybody, for being with us here today on Bob Long Sports. There's 429 to play in this first quarter. And another face-off win by Malvern Prep. Well, I'm really surprised with Malvern. You know, not, not because their face-off guys aren't good. I just think LaSalle may have had the advantage coming into the game, at least at the face-off X. And what you're seeing here early on, Bob, is probably 70% wins by Malvern. Again, these possessions turn into opportunities, shots, and, and you know whoever out ground balls and out shoots typically outscores the other team. Another shot. That one caught a piece of the pipe. Reshko getting barraged early on here. Yeah, lucky there with the pipe, helping out the goalie. Looks like they're out of bounds. Yeah, well, perhaps not. Again, it's so many different colored lines over there. But again, yeah, the red dotted line on the far side there. Yeah, they called a push. So uh, defender thought he hit him from the side. He actually hit him from the back. When the ball is loose, uh, a push without possession is not a penalty. If the ball was in the offensive person's stick, a push with possession would be a 30-second man-up penalty. 3.20 to play. It's Malvern Prep 4, LaSalle 1. An impressive effort early on from the Friars. Yeah, they came out fired up. I think if LaSalle can weather the storm here a little bit, uh, you don't want 4-1 going to 6-1. You want it to be 4-2 or 4-3. And it's 5-1 now. What a cut there off the ball. Eric Spanos. I think that was actually Potemski. Oh, number one, Potemski. Yeah, Potemski, number one, just a well-timed cut. We talked about Peden behind. Um, there's a special player that just graduated from Penn State a couple years ago, Grant Ament, and they do uh, they do like to relate uh, Peden to Ament. He's also going to Penn State, and he's averaging probably five or six assists a game uh, in these big games. So if you're one of those bigger shooters, um, you know, it's a field day to have uh, Peden behind there just feeding you. Timeout on the field. We'll be right back here on Bob Long Sports. All right, welcome back. 3.05 to play. First quarter action here on Bob Long Sports. Score is Malvern 5, LaSalle 1. Yeah, there was that timeout. Uh, I knew Robbie was, was, was going to take one pretty quickly. He let it get the 5-1. I understand trying to let his younger players play through that. But here you have to try to stop the momentum, get a possession here for LaSalle, rely on your senior pilling there to pick it up. And LaSalle had, they, they had a chance there for it. 
But Malvern Prep's going to get it right back. 50-50 ground ball, Bob. And Spanos comes up with it. I mean, Spanos is a beast. Uh, it's actually interesting. They, they changed the recruiting role more or less around Spanos. Uh, he committed to University of Maryland in eighth grade. Wow. And now you can't recruit kids till September 1 of junior year. There's a wind and fire. Rebound, and they score. Reshko made the first save. But like hockey, a, a rebound that pops right in front. Malvern first on it. Easy put away. That's demoralizing for Hreshko. He makes a big save, can't find the ball. Typically, you want your defense there to push any attackmen that are in the area down, even if it's a push without possession, to give him the ball back. But Malvern just was uh, opportunistic there and finished. 6 1. Could be a problem here for LaSalle unless they get going. And it couldn't be a more impressive start from Malvern Prep. They've controlled all facets of the game. Possession, certainly creating chances. Their interior passing in and around that cage is as good as any I've seen, Mike. Yeah, and they've come off a tough week. Uh, they lost to Haverford School last week. Uh, they beat GA. They probably sh thought they should have beat GA by more than they did. I think it was 14-9 yesterday. So I think these guys are pretty fired up. Uh, again, let's see how LaSalle responds. It's a long game. Lazaz gets a touch. Kelly with it now, who assisted on the only LaSalle goal thus far. This is where you look to your seniors for leadership. You know, who wants to take their guy to the goal, make something happen, maybe create a penalty, an assist, or even a goal. But this is where senior leadership kicks in. Fix tried to set the pick and said it's Kelly around the other side. Kelly deliberately. Huntley, he's got the only goal for LaSalle this far. Here's Lazaz going against the pole. Buno, you probably want to move it there. Pilling also getting pulled, which means one of the attackmen has a short stick and it's Huntley. LaSalle with some patience, under one minute to play in the first quarter. Well, LaSalle can't even penetrate these guys. That was Pilling, and now Kelly. Kelly, a wild shot. Flag came down. Yep, so it's a play on situation, Bob. Flag's down. LaSalle knows no matter what, they get the ball back. So here they might be able to either take a little bit of time off the clock be patient, or they can take a risk if they want to. Pilling from an off angle, he scores, and LaSalle gets back on the board with 20 seconds to play in the first quarter. Yeah, great great job by Jack Pilling. He notices the situation, has a short stick on him, beats the guy topside, and goes five hole on the goalie. Very opportunistic. We talked about it before. Now now LaSalle has the man up face off, so you'll notice on the, uh, on the wing will be Two LaSalle, um, LaSalle Explorers, one at the faceoff X. And then two, yeah, there you go. They're confusing me a little bit. Malvern took a guy off. And only two Malvern uh, Friars here on the faceoff X. So it's three versus two here at the faceoff because Malvern's man down on that penalty. This is a man up faceoff for LaSalle. And LaSalle will win that faceoff courtesy of Michael Mikulak. So you'll see quick subs here. They're going to get their man-up team on, which is typically your six best, best stick handlers on the team. Well, it's got to be now. Seven seconds and counting. Well, Bob, if you hold the ball heading at the end of the quarter, you actually regain possession at the beginning of the second yeah. without a face-off. So possession over the last second shot. LaSalle is going to take that into the second quarter. Here we go on Bob Long Sports. Again, Bob Long, Mike Morsell, my distinguished guest, one of the first two All-Americans, or the first All-American in LaSalle history, you had a teammate that also was All-American uh, while you were on campus here. That's right, yeah, my teammate Matt Maloney. Uh, we tell the story of Coach Leahy, who was on the sidelines for 28 years. Coach Leahy showed up to freshman football in the fall of 1993 and just basically tried to pick a bunch of athletes who have never played the sport of lacrosse. Uh, and you fast forward to the spring of 97. Uh, two of us were All-Americans. 
three others all state, and we won our first tail play, playoff game that year. Um, you know, we, we had a lot of uh, a lot of leaders through the 90s. You know, I think of the Mike Coonses and the Dave Savalos, Joe Rakowski, Rob Herzog, Greg Erb. Those guys did a lot of the dirty work early on uh, building the program. And I think the class of 97, which was our class, benefited from that. And then you've seen what LaSalle's done from there. They've been a dominant program in uh, Pennsylvania and even nationally ever since. Well, you've, you've heard our voices. Now you see our faces. Bob Long, Mike Morcell alongside. It's great to be back for another one of these games here. And, Mike, I tell you, this, this program, Rob Forster, taking over for Bill Leahy. He's done a wonderful job. It's great to see him have the opportunity to coach at this level. And it is all, at his alma mater as well. Yeah, we're thrilled with Robbie. You know, he's an alumni. Uh, Coach Leahy, we all loved, again, 28 years on the sidelines. But when you get somebody like Robbie Forrester, who's played in the program, played at Penn State, uh, played a little bit of professional lacrosse, he's a great leader of young men. Uh, we love having Robbie here in the booth. I wasn't ready for the camera there, but there you uh, go. that's okay. You that look happens. good. We'll take you back now to the field as we are underway in the second quarter. So 6-2 Malvern, but remember LaSalle's man up. If you can get a man up goal here and push it to 6-3, you could be in pretty good shape heading to the faceoff X. An ambitious pass and a giveaway. I don't understand that. They're saying hmm. the ball was tipped. The ball was tipped by Malvern. Interesting. A break for LaSalle for sure. Bird's eye view, sure, but we didn't see that up here. Also, quite the busy day at LaSalle. You might hear just a tinch or a, uh, just a little bit through your uh, our microphones. Oh, there's a big-time shot. Yeah, loud baseball game behind us, Bob. Yeah, Jack Vandergrift throws a loud one right past Doherty, and just like that, LaSalle back into it. Two yeah, straight goals. I give Vandergrift, Vandergrift credit here. He uses his defender as a screen, so he actually is covered but doesn't really worry about that, shoots around the defender. Oftentimes, the goalie can't even see the ball because the defender's in the way. But as a shooter, you just have to shoot around their body. Low to high, change the plane. 6-3, uh, we have a new ball game here. Yes, sir. And it is Stevie Davis back there in the face-off X. We talked about this as one of our keys to the afternoon. And it's going to be a loose ball. Shoveled along, and LaSalle has got a shot at it. Still no, but now finally it's Doherty. Still had no claimant there for a while. And you can't forget, Stevie Davis is a true freshman for LaSalle. So going against a team like Malvern, you've got to give the kid a lot of credit. He's tough as nails. Uh, he'll be around for four years. But, you know, a tough situation here getting thrust into. But, you know, great for him long term. And now Malvern Prep, they get their horses out there on the field. All the way through, tough shot, save made there on the attempt from Jack Irish. And it is going to be LaSalle possession. Yeah, nice move there by Jack. Beats his short stick. Uh, great save by Hareshko and then hustle by Jennings there. Now we have a helicopter over us, Bob. <laughs> we got it all going on. Tell you, LaSalle is the, uh, this is the place to be here. Not saying that uh, you're not going to catch another game or we got a JV lacrosse or something going on down even in the field behind us here. So, yeah, there's a lot going on here. LaSalle trying to make a save, but instead. It's another goal. Nicholas Potemski, how about the patience there, Mike, right in front of the net? Yeah, unfortunate on the turnover by LaSalle, but Spanos catches it, sees the defender slide upfield. One more, two fakes, and a finish. And an unselfish play there by Spanos. We mentioned him from Halford Prep. Yeah, he changed the recruiting rules, huh? That's, that's a new one. Yeah, you know, it wasn't his fault, but, you know, they used to recruit kids in eighth and ninth grade, and Spanos actually has the record for the earliest commit so before he scored a high school goal, he had already committed to the University of Maryland. I just don't think it's right for kids, you know, from a psychology perspective. Spanos obviously fought through it great, but glad they changed the rule to September 1 of junior year. It's probably the best thing for the kids long term. 7-3 Malvern Prep early on in the second quarter. Lazaz spins into trouble, able to bring it back. Good interior passing, but LaSalle is electing to hold this up. Ten minutes to play, second quarter. Yeah, imagine being in, in eighth grade and knowing where you're going to college already, Bob. It's <laughs> just, I think the work ethic may change, you know, yeah. probably a little bit of an ego coming into high school. Again, no fault of the kids, but um, it was just, it wasn't the right situation for a few years there, and they fixed it. A cross-field pass. 
And a quirky little ground ball pickup. Huntley is on it. Yep, ground balls are like rebounds in basketball. You know, if somebody tells you they're not getting you the ball, go get a ground ball. Tomahawk there from Mason Lazaz. Yeah, Lazaz, pretty unorthodox there. Keeps it in the right hand, even though he's on the left side of the field. And uh, just gets underneath his man with a face dodge and uh, a beautiful finish to the low right corner. Nine twenty-seven to play, second quarter. So LaSalle from six one to seven four. I think you uh, you weathered the early storm. Um, now you got to get some momentum here heading to halftime. Try to keep it within two or three goals, and I think you're feeling great. Ball's loose. LaSalle looking for it on the sideline, and it's last touched. Yeah, these loose ball, loose ball ground balls here. Yep. They just, LaSalle has to pick them up on the first attempt. Those are the difference between hanging around with the Malvern team and, uh, and potentially losing a game. Another ground ball. Looking for a home, and LaSalle came up with it, but they lost it. I don't even think that uh, number 16 for LaSalle, Will Pickering, realized that it left the stick. He was trying to pass it. He so, did, but just, an, again, another hustle play by Malvern. It's all about extra possessions. 7-4. LaSalle certainly hanging here for as well as Malvern Prep has played. LaSalle is in this one. Oh, they're certainly in it, Bob. Again, it's a long game. It's a game of runs. You know, you see five or six goals being scored at a time per team. Um, the beauty of the face-off X is the ball is not guaranteed back. So if you're playing football, the other team will kick it off. If you're playing basketball, the other team throws it in. In lacrosse, it's a 50-50 ball every time the other team scores. Off angle shot, Malvern, they'll get another go at it. You see Spanos' size there. He's probably six foot four, really knows how to use his body, and uh, you know, typically shoots right through the defender, use that defender as a screen. Here's Brian Charlone. Wow, what a pass that was in front. Couldn't finish. Super risky. Uh, great handle by Potemski. And Horeshko makes another save. Spanos. Looks like he wants to go at it himself. Instead, a good look. Bouncing shot. And Malvern Prep on the board again. Colin McGill. I think that's the first goal for him today, but he's a guy we were looking forward to seeing here today. Yeah, I think it's actually his second. He had one early, but you see the lefty, he needs the ball in his stick for about a half a second. And with that release, it's all wrists. I don't think Horeshko even saw it. Seven minutes, 54 seconds to go in this first half. And McGill's one of those kids. He's going to Dartmouth, uh, Ivy League lacrosse player next year. I've watched him for a few years. Again, he, you may look at the stat sheet. He has four or five goals a game, but he may have this ball in his stick for about 10 seconds. Uh, he's that type of impact player. A lot of contact. Still looking for a ground ball pickup. LaSalle is on it. Great ground ball there by number 10. And that's Michael Mikulak. Yeah, He's a sophomore. Uh, Kevin Doherty was talking about him before the game to me. Really happy with what Mikulak does. Tough kid. Uh, he just showed his, his value there. Ticking under seven minutes, 20 seconds to play. Your score, Malvern eight, LaSalle four, hanging with the number five team in the country. And LaSalle had it for a second. Two guys converged, neither got it. Here come the Friars the other way. Kellen Mathias to Spanos. That's good defense by LaSalle. Four on three, fast break. They figure out a way to even all up here, four on four. Now they're going to sub through the field with Lazaz. Really good transition defense. Malvern working out of the X now. Driving towards the net. Nice job by LaSalle's number 18, Ryan Moore. Yeah, Moore used his angles. He just shaded the offensive player behind the goal. All of a sudden, he looked up to shoot, and he did not have an angle to shoot, so he had to continue to possess. LaSalle throwing defenders at Spanos. 
Missed shot there. Another, again, the, this kind of interior, for lack of a better word, interior passing by yeah. Malvern Preps, creating some pretty decent looks. It's unbelievable. McGill, again, he only needs about six inches to be open, and uh, he'll get a shot off in a half a second. Yeah, Potensky missed that one. And Malvern Prep with a sustained offensive possession, a number of shots just high and wide of the cage, Mike, but they're getting their looks. They are. LaSalle's getting lucky here, too. Um, Definitely, Malvern's definitely out shooting LaSalle. And the fact that it's 8-4, you know, other than Horeshko making some big saves, Malvern has missed the goal a bunch as well. Spanos thought about it from an off angle. Potemski from X. 5.40 and ticking here in the second quarter. That shot didn't change the angle. Nice save by Hreshko. That was off the stick of McGill, who, as you said, Mike was looking for his third goal. Yeah, good save by Hreshko. Um, probably not the best shot by McGill. He'd want that one back, but you got to give Hreshko credit making the save. Important possession here for LaSalle. Again, down four with five minutes left in the half. This is a time you need a goal to cut it to three. Up top, Tommy Vandergriff gets a touch. And LaSalle's going to get number 19, Tim Melman, onto the plus side of things, wearing the Travis Mannion number 19, earned that award as a senior. Lazaz, a shot and a save there by Doherty. Uh, if you're Coach Forrester, probably not the best shot. You know, you trust Lazaz because he's been around and played in big games, but it's almost a turnover when you shoot the ball to the goalie stick like that. You either change the plane or put it on the ground. And certainly not as much has been asked of Doherty in net here today for Malvern Prep, but he's made a couple of big saves like that one there. Like you said, didn't quite change the level, Mike. Pretty open slot for him to see it, but found its way into the webbing. 4-12 and ticking. Second quarter action here on Bob Long Sports. Bob Long on play-by-play. -play. Mike Morsell, LaSalle legend of lacrosse and University of Maryland graduate with me on the telecast. A wind and a fire, finds the twine. Yeah, you'll see the assist again from Peden. Uh, he draws two guys, looks up top, number 37 steps down, has plenty of time and space, steps into about eight yards, just rips it high to high. Horeshko had no chance. Joseph Sheridan, the junior, on the goal for Malvern Prep. It's 9-4, Friars. Again, these attackmen, they create so much attention, uh, you know, going to Duke, Maryland, Penn State, that the defense oftentimes sloughs down to try to help. And Peden's too smart. He just sees Sheridan step down, and that's an easy goal. Malvern Prep gets the possession right back. Here's the danger time, Mike. It is. Yeah, it's make it, take it. Uh, pick your poison here on defense. Uh, you know, you can only have four long poles. You probably have six college players on the field for Malvern. So if you're LaSalle, who do you, who do you decide to short and who do you decide to pole? But uh, either way, you're probably at a disadvantage. We're under three minutes and 30 seconds to play here in the second quarter. Good look. Potemsky's shot. That one got the arm of Reshko. From Peden again. I uh, say it the same thing, you know, guy draws attention, head up constantly, guy's off ball, he found Potemski in there. Good save by Hareshko. Sheridan, who scored the last one, creating space. Spanos. Rare. Whiffed on it. That's a rare, rare play by Spanos there. I think he felt like he got pushed in the back there on the ground ball. LaSalle has a five on four fast break. Let's see what they can do. Vandergrift, extra one. Kelly fires it high. LaSalle in good position to retain. Yeah, the defense recognized, you know, five on four. They brought it over half with the pole. Uh, Kelly definitely wants that one back. You know, an eight-yard shot. Got to go high to low there, I think. Timeout on the field. 2.43 to play in this portion of today's game brought to you by E&M Insurance in North Wales, Pennsylvania. Run, owned, and operated by Chris Marr, graduate of LaSalle, very involved with the alumni board, 
and very involved with what we've done here at Bob Long Sports. Also a lacrosse guy, which is great. I'm glad to glad to be able to be able to be working with Chris over the course of this year, and his company is is phenomenal. They can help you from either a business or a personal standpoint. Check your insurance rates. Get you the lowest deal. And most importantly, Mike, you're going to give you the best service. And I know you work with Chris. We talked I about do, that yeah, in the last yeah. game. No, it's funny. It's just a coincidence. But uh, Chris Marr, you know, great family. Had two sons play at LaSalle here. And uh, just a good friend of mine. And uh, do all my property and casualty insurance through Chris. Great service there. Connor Kelly's the agent. And, uh, again, you know, couldn't ask for more on the service side. Very reliable. And uh, just, just great people looking out for you. That's great. e &M Insurance. Proud partner of ours, proud sponsor of LaSalle Athletics. Thanks to Chris. Again, if you're a member of the LaSalle community or even just the high school community at large, pay it forward. These are the folks that are putting the money forward and, uh, and putting you know the efforts to allow us to do what we do. We appreciate it. Give them your business. Or you might just save some money along the way. So it's LaSalle possession here, uh, 243 left in the half. We said it about two minutes ago, but LaSalle needs a goal here heading into half. I just think from a confidence perspective, uh, you know, kind of change up the momentum here. So let's see what Robbie Forrester comes out of the timeout with. 237 to play and ticking here in the first half. Tell you what, I don't know if you can hear, folks, the uh, walk-up music behind us. But again, the baseball field is right behind us. Nice that high school players at their home field get a chance to have walk-up music. That that was not the case while we were here. I can tell you that for <laughs> sure, Mike. That's pretty unique. Yeah, they've, cha <laughs> they've certainly changed the experience for the high school athlete. And what a great place this is if you're a lacrosse player as well. A wonderful facility. What a great job to hang on to that ball by Frankie Fix. Retain an all-important possession, Mike. Yeah, super aggressive double team there by Malvern. Uh, again, they just did it. These LaSalle players don't see the slide coming. And Negative. Huntley gave it up. Fast break, Malvern. Pulling it back, number 36, Matthew Cachese. And a giveaway. It's going to get all the way to midfield, and Huntley is there. Here's Huntley. Slicing through two defenders. Numbers here for the Explorers, and Kelly couldn't quite handle it. All right, tough, tough catch there for Kelly, but... Got to get the ball back here. Yeah, and that, this is the tough one right here is when you give up the ground ball. LaSalle on it. And a wild shot, and they're going to leave them out of position. Yeah. understand the idea from Vandegrift, but LaSalle was not set up, and uh, that gives the ball right back to Malvern. Yeah, the right shot by Vandegrift. He understood the situation. I think he thought he had a chance there, but without anybody backing up, it's just another way of saying it's a turnover. One minute, seven seconds to go, first half, and Malvern Prep leading by five. A chance to really throw a tough one here at LaSalle. They could go up six. Huge defensive possession here for the Explorers trying to get into the locker room. Yeah, so Malvern just brought Spanos out of the box as a midfielder. That's that luxury of all the talent they have. They had other three other attackmen in the game, so then they can play Spanos in the midfield. They're going to dodge here right now. Peden. And Spanos played catch with it. Now Spanos dives through, spin move, couldn't quite finish. But my, oh, my, was that athletic. What a save by Horeshko. I mean, one-on-one -on -one with Spanos, unbelievable save. And LaSalle gets the possession with 27 seconds left. Yeah, you may see a timeout here by LaSalle. I think they have one left in their pocket, 20 seconds, or, the, or uh, Robbie may just let his guys play. Tough one there. Double coverage. Malvern Prep looking for possession with 12. Perhaps one more look they can get here as there's seven seconds left. Timeout called by Malvern Prep. They'll devise one more offensive push. And like you said, you know, maybe that's something that LaSalle may, may have considered, didn't pull the trigger on, and they gave it away. Yeah, maybe Frankie Fix, maybe he didn't understand the situation, but they had you know at least 18 seconds left. It looked like it was a bit of a Hail Mary pass there. I'd rather just have him run it over half and then maybe call a timeout, and then LaSalle could take a shot. Now you're in a situation where Malvern's up 9-4. Seven seconds left. They have a chance now to go up six. Seven seconds left on the clock. 9-4 the score, Malvern prep. 
We mentioned the baseball game as well going on behind us. Big one. This LaSalle team, Mike, is undefeated this year, and they're taking on a really good Bonner Prender gas team. It's their last game here at uh, Ward Field in the regular season, and they only have one more road game after that. So the penultimate regular season game, another team that has a state title aspiration along with this LaSalle lacrosse team. So a lot of the good things going on across LaSalle sports in general, but especially here in the spring sports. That's awesome. Yeah, got to give Joe Parisi, athletic director, a lot of credit. Uh, it's been very consistent. Uh, Joe Powell was the AD when I was here. Uh, been around for many years between him and Tony Resch and others. Uh, they've held that athletic program strong. All right, here we go. Last few seconds. Peden threw that one away, and LaSalle did avoid any more damage in the final minute. 9-4 the score. Malvern Prep with the lead here as we head to halftime. And, Mike, your thoughts? You know, I think if you're LaSalle, again, it started out as 6-1. Um, so, you know, things could have got very concerning there. They settled down a little bit. You know, being down five is obviously not the best situation to Malvern. Um, so I think if you're LaSalle, it's all about the first five, six minutes of the third quarter here. If you can gain some early possessions and get a goal or two, uh, you're right back in it. Uh, if it swings the other way and becomes 10 or 11 for Malvern midway through the third, um, you know, LaSalle's going to be in bad shape. All right, we'll take a break. We've got 11.30 and ticking on the clock here. Stay with us. Halftime on Bob Long Sports, and we'll be back with more action from Malvern against LaSalle in a non-league matchup here from Glazer Field. All right, folks, welcome back. Glazer Field, second half action here on Bob Long Sports. Bob Long and Mike Marcel on the broadcast for LaSalle College High School against Malvern Prep. The score, LaSalle, four, trailing Malvern by five with the nine goals. Very impressive effort from this Friars team that is ranked number five in the country. Another face-off win by Malvern, Bob. And, uh, again, if you're LaSalle, that's where you're hoping to win the game or at least try to control the game a little bit. And Malvern's certainly over 50% at the face-off X. And here comes uh, Potemski again with the short stick. Potemski's been really good. Spanos back behind the net at X. They'll work it out to the side. Bouncing shot, and it's going to be Spanos in position to retain possession. So Potemski there knows that his job is just to draw a slide, which is essentially a double team, move the ball through X, and then you saw Spanos go to the backside there for an open shot. It's a pretty simple offense uh, when you have these type of athletes. He's going to try it again. So his goal here is to just run by 40, make somebody come to him, then his job is to move the ball. Over a minute into this one, and Mike, certainly this isn't Malvern's intent, but LaSalle also hasn't gotten a touch here. So controlling possession, but also this is a team that likes to run, like you said, and they're going to take the scoring opportunities when they arise. Yeah, it's probably a little early for them to hold the ball, but um, Coach McAvoy is a very smart coach. He's probably telling them it's not the worst thing in the world, up five goals to get a long possession, and if it results in a goal, it's a bit of a backbreaker for LaSalle. And every shot that misses, so long as there is somebody in position, results in another Malvern possession. Here's a great look through traffic, and they'll get one more look at it off the stick of Alexander Nikolic. Yeah, we just mentioned Coach McAvoy um, and Coach Resch earlier. Uh, this is that lineage of Wings alumni that came here in the 80s and 90s. Um, some of them were from Philadelphia, some were not. But the game of lacrosse has really grown exponentially because of these types of coaches. Coach Leahy comes to mind, Coach Resch, Coach McAvoy, Coach Nostrant, Coach Bates, and many other names here locally. Uh, Coach O'Grady, also an assistant at Malvern. Uh, they built the sport of lacrosse here. Loose ball, an important one. And LaSalle does come up with it. 
Big time ground ball there by 36. Now Pilling's bringing it down the side. Again, if you're LaSalle, you might have a bit of an advantage, but you want to play smart here. You want to value the ball, uh, take good shots, find a good matchup. Kind of a must score situation here for LaSalle. Here's Pilling with it, far side. 9.25 to play third quarter. Yeah, Pilling has the short, but they slid early there with the pole. Typically, Pilling does not get the short as one of the better middies for LaSalle. Same with Lazaz, but the strategy here is slide early to the short stick, make him move it. Frankie Fix, and it's Vandergrift at X. Here's Andrew Kelly. Yeah, this Malvern defense under coach uh, Paul O'Grady has a lot of experience in the league, knows how to play matchups, knows how to slide early. Speaking of which, Chris O'Grady in net. Yeah, Paul's second son, uh, his older son Luke plays at Providence now, graduated from Harvard School. And I think Chris growing up had to hop in the net and take all of Luke's shots, ended up being a goalie. And now you see him playing in a big time game here. Huntley doubled hard on that slide. There is the flag. Frankie Fix gets decked behind the net. Great look. Another flag. Tough shot and they score. So there's Pilling. Steps around the sh uh, defender there with a quick little fake. Big time goal by LaSalle, 9-5. Now it's a man up face off. So this is where you have to rely on your face off team. You'll be three on two in the face off X. Uh, three LaSalle players, two Malvern players. The goal is to get a two-on-one somewhere, retain possession, and go man up. So just like that, LaSalle, they get what they need. It's 9-5. They're going to get the man advantage, like you said, Mike. Yeah, big face-off here from Mikulak. Uh, again, I was talking to Kevin Doherty earlier. Likes to put this kid and Stevie Davis in tough situations. And uh, if they can come up with the ground ball here, again, they'll be man up and uh, have an opportunity to score to, to bring it within three. So a big face off at hand. Great job, Mikulak. He's come up with two huge face offs and a timeout called by Rob Forrester. Yeah, probably the right call by Robbie. I think he thought it was maybe a, a tougher ground ball there for Mikulak. In hindsight, it looked like Nikolak had a fast break, but uh, you can't second guess yourself there. They're going to get the six best stick handlers on the field, their man up team, and again, try to bring it to 9 6. This portion of today's game brought to you by EM Insurance in North Wales. Chris Marr does a great job with e &M Insurance, property and casualty insurance for either your business or your personal. Give them a call. Visit them at eandminsurance.com. Let them know how you can, or he can help you with your insurance, get you the best rates. Again, that's e &M Insurance. My partner, Mike Morsell here today. Great to have you back, Mike. Glad we're able to Get out here, it's a beautiful day. It's a, an impressive effort from both of these teams and LaSalle trying to find a way to upset a top five team nationally in yeah. Malvern Prep. Yeah, LaSalle's hanging around. Uh, we've talked about it all game. Uh, it was 9-4 at the half and we said if it got to 10 or 11-4, they'd be in trouble. But if it got to 9-6 or 9-7, they'd be in great shape. This is their opportunity to get it to 9-6. Uh, man up. Plenty of time left in the third quarter. This would be a big time goal for LaSalle. Big momentum swing. So LaSalle, they'll get possession right around the middle of the field. And it'll be Huntley to take it into the offensive zone. See Oppenheimer in there, he's a man up specialist. Big kid, comes in, plays that righty spot. Can oftentimes step down for a shot. 
Lazaz, and now Oppenheimer with the shot. Pops straight up in the air. Will be a key crown ball, and Oppenheimer is there. Yep, good play by Oppenheimer. Great save by O'Grady. Lazaz winds and fires, and a huge save by O'Grady. Yeah, Lazaz probably has one of the best shots in the state here. O'Grady lost oh, it, though. Loose ball here for LaSalle. Got to pick it up. Uh, they called a push. Yeah, and a push. Sal gets the ball back. Good hustle there on the ride. Yeah, really, really nice. Yeah, if you're Lazaz, you want that one back. Eight to ten yards uh, on O'Grady. You know, O'Grady makes a great save, but you got to change the plane there if you're Mason Lazaz. There he is, Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer, a man up. There's our guy. Just talked about a man up specialist. You know, big six foot five, an opposing presence there. Uh, steps into about seven yards. Perfect shot over the corner for a Grady shoulder. So we got ourselves a ball game here. Nine six. Yeah, it's just amazing the level of play here. You know, you have at this level in high school. You, Ten years ago, you would never have heard of a man up specialist. Then somebody like Oppenheimer comes in and gets a big goal to make it nine six. Uh, it's just, you know, I, I respect Oppenheimer for playing his role. He probably wants to play a little bit more, but he's ready to go on the bench, sees the flag down, steps in, big-time goal. LaSalle gets possession again. There's Mikulak, tough kid doing his job, sophomore. He's been huge. Now you can start to feel the momentum here on the sidelines by LaSalle. 9-6, they get a ground ball. Find a good matchup here. Can they go 9-7? There's Lozaz with the short stick. Cradling him towards his, moving him to his left. Looks like Pilling has the other short. He'll probably start to dodge. I assume they'll slide early though in the O'Grady defense. This is Pilling. Lazaz scores. Boom. Down to two. Great step down by Mason Lazaz. 18 yard shot. 9 7 Malvern. Uh, again, we talked about it at the half. 9 4 goes to 9 7. Might see a timeout here by Malvern. Uh, Mack also might let him play through it. Can really feel the mojo here on the south sideline. They, they know they're in it, they're feeling confident. They're not intimidated anymore. Long way to go here. Three straight goals from LaSalle to start the second half. Here's Mikulak again, another faceoff. Kid's being a beast. Three straight wins for him at least. And Kelly will slow it down. Awesome job by Mikulak. For a sophomore, we've talked about Stevie Davis as a freshman. Now you got Mikulak as a sophomore. Nice to see these kids around LaSalle for the next few years. Showing big time toughness. Here's Frankie Fix with the short stick. Fix dives in that one just wide. LaSalle's gonna maintain that possession. Yep, good move by Fix, saw a little bit of an opening. Uh, in lacrosse, if you're gonna miss, it's not too bad to miss wide versus hitting the goalie because if your attackman backs it up, again, it's just your possession, no harm, no foul. Here's Lazaz with the short stick. Slide early. Find somebody else with the shorty. Move the ball backside. Lazaz winds and fires. He scores. Oh, beautiful ball movement there. Huntley starts it. This, this Lazaz sideline's fired up. Huntley starts it by drawing the slide, moves it up top to Pilling. Pilling actually had a shot from about 15 yards. Goes one more to his teammate Lazaz from probably 10 yards. Very unselfish extra pass. 9-8, Bob. The number one, number five team in the country and a, a set of rankings from, from one to kingdom come. They are number five nationally. They had a five goal lead at half. LaSalle with four straight goals. The down by one, another face off. Mikulak couldn't win that one, but what a job he has done as a catalyst to get this team back in the game. Yeah, now we really buckle up, Bob. We've got a big time game here, 9-8. Uh, LaSalle's not going away. Let's see how Malvern responds. Five minutes 
in the third. An eternity left to play. Wow, that's a save there by Reshko right on the goal line. What a great save by Hreshko. And the defender did a nice job to nudge the attackman off his route, take some speed off that shot. Yeah, they have a slow break if they want it, but I think you hear the word yellow in lacrosse, that means let's slow it down. Uh, certainly the right move, get your defensive middies off the field, get your offensive middies on the field. So uh, I'm glad they did not push it there. It was a smart play. Huntley attacks. Vandergrift on a one hop to Jack Pilling and they'll reset. Yeah, Pilling and Fix have the poles up top. So again, you want to find a shorty. I think this is Vandergrift. See if he can draw a slide here. This beat is the his younger guy. Vandergrift, Tommy. Draw a slide, get the ball moving. You have to step up and beat your guy though. Here's Huntley and Pilling. He's been at the center of a lot of the action here in the second half. Kelly at X. Pilling with patience. Okay, good possession here for LaSalle. You know, you don't have to be too aggressive again. You got the score where you want it. You want to try to wear this defense down a little bit. Again, go after the short stick, draw a slide. Probably two passes for a shot. This is Jack Vandergriff now for Huntley. Three ten to play third quarter. Lasalle with some momentum here, making the defense work. Not trying to force anything at this point here, Mike. Yeah, so if they don't go to the goal soon, I don't think it'll happen right away, but the, the refs do have the opportunity to tell them to keep it in the box, which is essentially a shot clock uh, without having a shot clock, but it doesn't seem like they're putting that on LaSalle yet. Huntley dives. Huntley scores! Wow. And a flag comes. We're tied at nine. Let's wait for the goal. Put the arms up, refs. Put the arms up. Give us a goal. Beautiful. That's a judgment call there, whether he was pushed or whether he fell into the crease. They agreed he was pushed, 9-9. Awesome play by Huntley. What a game. 2.38 to play, and Mike, it's a 5-0 run in the third quarter for this LaSalle Explorer team. I wish I could hear that halftime speech. Somebody, whether it was Tony Rush, Brian Harrington, Kevin Dock, or head coach Rob Forster, somebody fired him up. They came out from 9-4. Here we are, 9-9, eight minutes later. Oop. And a violation called there. Malvern Prep. He's got to bring it back. Good try by Davis. I think he tried to jump the gun there. That's okay. You can live with that as a coach. Well, there's been a lot of effort to get back into this game. Here they are. Can Malvern Prep come with an answer here offensively? Yeah, if LaSalle gets a hold here, again, the momentum's already on LaSalle's side, but if you can make a stop here, potentially go up a goal at the end of the third, that'd be the perfect position. Malvern with a dive, another one right in front. Great look. Put Temsky puts Malvern Prep up one. Doesn't matter of time, it's okay. Uh, first goal for them out of the second half. Uh, Peden again, you know, Jack Irish does a nice job drawing the slide, moves it through X, and then typically on the back side where Potemski cut, that's usually open. The defense is a little bit out of sorts there. 2.03 to play third quarter. Malvern Prep takes the lead back. Mikulak is back in the faceoff X. And he creates another possession here for LaSalle. Great job by Mikulak. Here comes a double team by Spanos. Oh, and Spanos came up with it. Excellent play. You mentioned it on his way to Maryland next year. Yeah, I know Coach Tillman's excited to have Spanos. Been waiting around for him for a while. He just brings a big presence. I'm not sure if they'll have him play midfield or attack right away. But I would think with his stick skills, his athleticism, his toughness, you know, I believe there's a way for him to get on the field early on at Maryland. 
A buck 26 to play, third quarter. Ball's loose, LaSalle comes up with it. Great defensive play there, number 40, Colin Wakefield. That's Wakefield, we've said his name a couple times here. He's kind of an emotional leader here. And no Great defensive midfield, does his job, gets the ball to the attack. Now you'll see Wakefield sprint off. Well, it was a nice job there. He recognized that he didn't have the numbers there. So you heard yellow again here. We got one minute left in the third. So yellow is just to slow it down, get your right guys on the field, then set something up here and go at them. Under a minute, 50 seconds to be exact in the third quarter. And it's Jack Pilling. Interesting seeing Malvern extending the defense here. Uh, 42 is a pretty good athlete, but that usually makes the slide a lot longer. Thirty seconds left in the third quarter. Pilling will pull it back. Yep, Pilling's going to set him up. I think you'll see Malvern slide early again. Whoever decides to dodge, here's Frankie Fix from the X. Got to push the corner now. Somebody's got to go. Seven yep. seconds left. You'll hear turbo here, which means get to the goal in the next five seconds. And it ain't going to happen. Nope. All right. Excellent job by the Malvern defense in the final stage of that third quarter. We head to the fourth. It's 10-9 for Ayers. Everything you could ask for, Mike, in this game. Yeah, Bob, when it was 6-1, you know, if you told me it was going to be 10-9 going to the fourth, I don't think I'd believe you. But uh, here we are. And uh, just a great job by LaSalle fighting back. Um, you know, Malvern, you have to give them credit for getting up early. But uh, LaSalle fights back. Anything can happen in the fourth quarter here. We're starting to see a couple trends with Mikulak at the X. Um, you know, him over Davis right now, it just seems like he has the right move. Nothing against Davis, but sometimes you just go with your hot hand. Uh, and then on offense, if LaSalle can keep attacking the short stick, knowing Malvern's going to slide early and moving the ball, it's usually two passes away from the slide. That's where we've seen the last three goals. Um, and if you're Malvern, I think, again, you, you get the ball through Peden, through Spanos, and through Potemski, um, and that's going to be their keys to success. But I'm excited for the fourth quarter. Now a question for you here. You mentioned towards the end of the first quarter when LaSalle elected to hold that ball back, yep. recognizing that they were going to get possession to begin that second quarter. Uh, is that something that when they were going turbo-turbo, right, Is that would that have been an option for them, or is that – the situation now? No, the, the only reason that was an option in the first quarter is because LaSalle was man up. Right. So right. If, if you're man up, you are able to hold possession as the clock ends of the quarter and retain it heading into the next quarter. If it's all even, you know, you either have to go to the goal and now you'll see a face off. Gotcha. Yep. A little nuance there, Bob. What a beautiful day out here at LaSalle. Campus is uh, vibrant. All right, we head to the fourth, and a good one. The number five team nationally against the LaSalle Explorers. One of, if not probably the best team in the Philadelphia Catholic League, certainly, and a team that has state aspirations at the PIAA level. It's as good as it gets here. And, Mike, the other question I have for you, you talked a lot about some of the different coaches that have really shaped the game here in southeastern Pennsylvania. No doubt about it, this has become a hotbed. What do you attribute that to? Is it really those coaches? Is it the sports acceptance? Or is it quite simply that there are just some phenomenal athletes here and, and that's kind of what pervades the national lacrosse scene at the college level? Yeah, I think at the core, or fundamentally, I, I do credit some of those early coaches. Uh, since then, the game of lacrosse has just grown exponentially. Um, so I kind of give credit to the growth of the game. But certainly the Tony Reshes and the John McAvoys and Again, those guys I mentioned, Leahy, Nostrand, uh, Bates, O'Grady, and others. Um, these are guys that have built the game. Tough and break there for LaSalle. And Cooper Frankenheimer took advantage of it. Raced down the field, beat Hreshko, and it's 11-9 Malvern Prep. Yeah, actually Davis won the faceoff. Yes, he the did. ball on his stick, but you got to give credit there to the polls between Pup, Buno, and, uh, and a couple other the – the riding defensive poles there for Malvern. They won the ball back and a, a big momentum swing. Again, if you're LaSalle, you're not nervous yet, but uh, you had possession there down one and uh, quickly go down two.
And Malvern Prep's going to come up with possession again. Yep. It's going to be a possession ball game now. And the Friars will slow this one down. Yep, they'll get their subs in, get everybody a touch, get it around, maybe use a minute or two. Uh, again, two goals, as we've seen, is not a big enough cushion to hold the ball, but they certainly want to get their star players on and, and find the right matchups. Another shot. Reshko with the save. Beautiful save by Reshko. Spanos wants that one back for sure. Can't give it away, though, guys. We just gave the ball back. All the way home, and a big-time goal. Contact, stayed through it. Joseph Sheridan puts Malvern Prep up three. Yeah, the LaSalle staff looks perplexed. Hreshko makes a huge save on Spanos. Somehow they aren't able to clear the ball, and within five seconds, Malvern not only has a goal, but now they have a man-up face-off for a late hit. Really shooting themselves in the foot there. But the mark of a championship team like Malvern Prep team that can take that 5-0 run by LaSalle, find themselves in a tie ball game, and can come up with the answers to begin the fourth quarter here. Very impressive from this Friar team. Yeah, you got to give Malvern credit. Again, let's, let's see if LaSalle, they've shown their toughness this game. Let's see if they can do the same thing, come back, win a tough ground ball here, you know, kill the penalty, and try to get their offensive on. You get the sense that you are watching two of the very best teams here in PA and beyond. A high-level lacrosse game with many more twists and turns to come. 10.52 to play in the fourth quarter. Malvern has two goals here in the first minute and change. Yeah, good timeout by Robbie. Uh, Mikulak wins it. Now what you have to be careful for here, remember LaSalle is man down. So whoever starts with the ball out of the timeout will most likely be double teamed by two Malvern poles. And then I would see the other defenseman from Malvern shutting off the other attackman and midfielder from LaSalle. The goal there is for a two-on-one, you know, two defensemen, one offensive guy, they're going to try to cause a turnover. Now, Robbie playing his own chess match may have an idea to maybe throw a nine iron to the corner and let, let somebody fight for the ball one-on-one. -on -one. But be interesting to see how both of these teams come out of this timeout. LaSalle has possession, but they are man down. Fourth quarter action here on Bob Long Sports. It's Bob Long, Mike Morsell here for LaSalle Lacrosse as they take on Malvern Prep. We mentioned all the action going on at LaSalle. Another lacrosse game was just completing on the field behind uh, or uh, further down the line here at uh, the Glacier, you know, Ward Field Complex. And then right behind us, LaSalle Baseball taking on Bonner Prendergast score in that one, LaSalle 2. Bonner, Prendy, zero, top of the fourth. Look at you, Bob, working both games. Do what we can. I can't give you any color in baseball, that, sorry. That's okay. I, I can do that maybe with a little bit more knowledge than I, than I can here, though I, I appreciate you bringing me along and, and try to use my working knowledge of the game here. It's, it's great to be here. So let's see. LaSalle will probably have their best athletes start with it. And, again, I mentioned a potential double team. Uh, so you have Huntley starting in the defensive end. You have three attackmen that are going to swarm him. And then two defensemen will probably come quickly. Everybody else will shut off since they're man up. There's the nine. There's that deep ball. Andrew. And Kelly comes up with it. Whew, he got swarmed by three Malvern guys. Yep, dislodged. This is trouble. Malvern with the numbers, extra pass, and they couldn't control it. A break there for LaSalle. Not that they're out of trouble yet. Here's Nicholas Potemski. With 10.09 to play, it's a three-goal lead for Malvern Prep. So Malvern Prep's technically man up here for probably another 15 seconds or so, so they're going to get a quick playoff here, probably a turbo-type play. Nikolic and now Peden. Couple more passes, and they get it right back to Peden at the top. Yeah, he missed that ball, didn't he? Yeah, a little trouble seeing it. Same here. <laughs> As the sun glistens onto the turf field at Glazer. Peden. 
Wind and fire, finding the twine. Malvern preps number four, Colin McGill. There's McGill again, time and space. Uh, he's lights out. I think he's three for five today on shooting, 60%. Uh, again, he won't have the ball on his stick for more than a second, but he just rips overhand, high to high. Hareshko had no chance. 9.31, Malvern prep. They found a way to respond. They led by five at the half, Mike. LaSalle goes on a 5-0 run to tie it at nine. And now four straight from the Friars of Malvern Prep. You said it before. It rings true now. This is a game of runs. And LaSalle, it's their turn so to LaSalle, see what they can do. Yeah, LaSalle's still man down, Bob. So it was an unreleasable penalty on Jennings there before. Melmick just won the, fa won the face off. LaSalle is still man down technically. Yeah, Mikulak has been incredible in the face-off X That's here Mikulak. today. Yep. Sorry about that. And Reshko. There's your nine iron. Let him fight for it. A delay a game. They did not get the ball into the box in 10 seconds. Heads up. So now Malvern Prep with the possession. Man up again. So it's six on five. Malvern's going to try to get their top stars on. Okay, now we're all even. Six on six. Penalty's over for LaSalle. Peden, hesitation, gets into the middle and swarmed there by LaSalle. There comes the flag. Yeah, another flag. That's Peden making something happen. Ball's still alive, though. Now you really take the air out of the ball. If you're Malvern, up four with eight minutes, you get the ball back no matter what. So now you may see them hold it a little bit, kill a little bit of clock. Peden and Nikolic play catch with it. You know, frustrating if you're LaSalle, you know, three penalties here in the fourth quarter. They go on a 3-0 run. Now they're going to get the ball back here. This is Tucker Millhouse with a touch. And yeah. Spanos at X. I think Tucker's going to Villanova. His dad, Stowe, played there at Villanova. Nice lineage. Remember that flag still lies on the field. Malvern Prep will get it right back. And there's your whistle. There it is. His man ups are killing LaSalle. I mean, it's 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 easy from up here to say play better defense, but I think the athleticism of Malvern oftentimes forces LaSalle to overplay or lunge, oftentimes resulting in a penalty. Millhouse will get it back into play. Man advantage here for Malvern Prep. Leading by four, 7.28 to play, fourth quarter. A 5-0 run highlighted the third quarter from LaSalle, tying the game at nine, and Malvern Prep in championship fashion has had the answer. This, an absolute must stop, and a block. Possession rem remains with Malvern Prep. One more right in front, and they score. What a cut to the front by Nicholas Potemski. There's Potemski, and another flag on LaSalle for unsportsmanlike. Somebody said something to somebody. I think LaSalle got caught last there and you're going to see LaSalle going in the box again. And this is where it starts to get away from you here, Mike. 7.09 to play. Got to find a way here on this, again, seemingly endless stream of man disadvantages. You got to find your way out of this one here. Get the ball back. Yeah, it looks like either the, pe I think the penalty might have been on Hreshko. Yeah, it looks see, that see way. The backup goalie going in. Yep, that's James Guerin. All right, LaSalle, you know, not going to unravel here. They're going to show their toughness, hopefully show some character and integrity here, fight back. You're down five goals with seven minutes. Uh, if you make a save here, get a possession, you can try to come back pretty quickly. Uh, if Malvern does score here and they're up six, you're certainly in trouble. It's 
So here's something for you. Something you can only get with a uh, with a, a student who's helping us out, which we appreciate. Apparently that's not James Garen in the net, although that unequivocally is James Garen's number. So might add a jersey sh swap, Mike. Okay. The unnamed number 24 in there at net for LaSalle. And he gets his uh, gets his net on one. Nicely done. Ooh. Good hustle. Interesting by the call there right on the end line. Yeah, it's a judgment call by the ref. Uh, I think he made the right one giving it back to LaSalle. But good house, good hustle by the Malvern attackman there. Yeah, the, so the ball was was heading towards the end line. Malvern player kind of ran past it. Doesn't matter now. Is Malvern Prep's going to get the ball right back? But the Malvern Prep sideline thought that they had gotten to that end line first or at least gotten closer to the ball when the ball got past the end line. There's Buno making an impact again. Uh, 44 comes out of the box. Rides Frankie Fix. Takes the ball out of his stick. Gets it to an attack when he gets off. About halfway home here in the fourth quarter. Millhouse. Peden gets hit hard. Somehow maintains possession. LaSalle does not like the call as the flag flies in. Yeah, I thought that one was a little ticky-tack. Um, you know, typically don't argue with the refs, but it seems like it's 6-0 here in penalties on LaSalle. Um, four or five of them probably were penalties, but that one looked a little bit like a brush. A shot. I thought that I think that caught the pipe. And wouldn't be surprised to see them put the parking brake on here, Mike. Yep. Flags down. Up five goals, five minutes to play. Coach McAvoy's been around the block too much. Uh, knows to take a little time off here. Here's Spanos. Fronted there by Frankie Fix. Great look into the middle. Some contact. They score, and another flag goes down. Three of them. Yeah, Spanos got a short stick behind, and that's a lethal matchup for LaSalle. Uh, Frankie Fix did his best, but uh, Spano shook him, found the offensive guy for the goal, and uh, it was a hold across the neck there, uh, LaSalle, by the, uh, by the LaSalle defenseman. 15 to 9. Maybe two. Uh, they're giving us all even, so the penalty is wiped out with the goal because it was a 30 second penalty. If it were a slash or a one minute penalty, it would be a man up face off for Malvern, but since it was only a hold, there is no penalty. LaSalle needs a goal. So that's now six straight goals from Malvern Prep after the game was tied at nine. Yep. LaSalle went on a 5-0 run to start the second half. Yeah, the game of lacrosse, you know, you can never get too high, never get too low because, again, we said it earlier, it's a game of runs. Teams can score five or six goals in a matter of four minutes. Uh, because of the face-off acts and the make-it-take-it opportunities. And LaSalle defensively trying to find a way to not only get a stop but get possession. They'll start with a quick save but a big-time finish. Yeah, I think that's McGill's. Uh, McGill again. Probably his fifth goal of the game. We said it earlier, he's a smooth lefty, gets a little bit of garbage in there. Uh, just turns and sticks it up high. Breshko was back in there and net on that one. And the number five team in the country, Mike, showing you exactly why here. Yeah, they are, Bob, taking the wind out of the sails a little bit. Uh, a little demoralizing if you're a LaSalle fan or LaSalle player. Um, but again, I think you have to give Malvern credit. They are a loaded team this year, uh, 15 Division I commits. And by the looks of this, what potentially could be this final score, uh, probably what we predicted. But uh, it's not over yet. LaSalle's going to keep fighting. Another one. I thought that was side net at first glance, but somehow from the angle, yeah, it finds its like, way into the back of the net. Jack Irish. Looks like LaSalle almost gave up there on defense. I was surprised. I didn't think Irish had a win, had an angle there, but uh, pulls the stick back from his right to his left hand, and uh, you know finds the net. We said this last time. A mom goal. That 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 felt like a mom goal, but you know what? Somehow, at, from an almost impossible angle, he found his way home. It did look like the mom goal when the ball goes <laughs> on the outside of the net, and all of our moms cheer. But 
That was an actual goal. That's right. So uh, well done by Irish. In honor of Mother's Day, of course. <laughs> always right. Mom's always right. I'd like to see LaSalle get a ground ball here in a good possession. Nice job by Pilling. All right, Pilling now. Let's see what LaSalle can do offensively. Under four minutes to go. It's an eight-goal deficit in favor of these Malvern Prep Friars. 15 D1 players. It's been well documented there. The Interac, arguably the best league year over year in the state of Pennsylvania. Lazaz winds up and hits it. There you go, Lazaz, showing a little bit of fight. Get us to 17-10. And uh, go back to the face-off X here with Davis, see if you can do it again. Uh, nice to see that nice step down, uh, probably 12-yard shot by Lazaz. Mike, if you're if you're a LaSalle fan or your head coach Rob Forrester, assistant Tony Resch, what are you taking from this game? You know, of course, your goal is going to be win to win a Philadelphia Catholic League championship, to win a state championship. You know, what are you going to learn from a game like this? What would you take based on what you've seen here so far today? Yeah, well, knowing the youth that LaSalle has brought to the field here, we've talked about. You know, face-off guys are sophomores. One's a freshman. Uh, there's another junior and sophomore on attack. Um, Malvern most, you know, mostly is a senior Latin team. You know, you big, strong kids here. We talked about 15 D1 commits. So I'm not a big fan of moral victories, but um, for the youth here for LaSalle and, and as they head into the state playoffs, which the Interact does not compete for, I think you have to feel good about the effort. You certainly have to feel good about being down 6-1, tying the game 9-9. So there's a lot to learn from here and a lot to grow upon. Under three minutes to go in this one. Malvern's emptying the bench a little bit, it looks like, letting some guys play that, you know, bust their butt in practice every day. They want a chance to score. There's McGill again. And McGill, he gets plenty of chances to score, but he gets that one there and makes it 18-10, Malvern. Yeah, McGill sixth. Uh, again, the kid doesn't have the ball in his stick long, but he knows where to be at the right time. And he catches and finishes. He's coming out of the game now. And uh, he's going on to Dartmouth next year to, to uh, compete in the Ivy League. And you'll see his name for the next four years, I think, just putting goals in the net. And good for him. Really, in these, especially in the sport of lacrosse, some of the highest level teams are also high academic schools. And they he's going to have the opportunity to get a wonderful education at Dartmouth, which is, you know, again, uh, just as, if not more important, certainly, than, than what he's going to do on the lacrosse field. That's wonderful. Yeah, there's a big myth out there that, that people in youth lacrosse think their son can get a full scholarship for lacrosse. Uh, they basically don't exist. Um, there's about 12 and a half scholarships for a fully funded Division I team. That goes across 45 guys. Um, maybe one will get a full ride, but even then it's rare. Mostly it's spread out amongst the team. So to your point, if you can use the sport of lacrosse as a vehicle, to maybe get into a school you wouldn't normally get into, better academic school than you'd be used to because you could play lacrosse there. That seems like you know what most of these uh, most of these kids look for. 2:06 to play. Stoppage on the field. A flag came down. It's going to be LaSalle possession. Delay of game was the call. There's two flags. I think there's a delay of game and a hold. Uh, Malvern called a timeout. Uh, so I think they'll be uh, six on four LaSalle when we come back. Final timeout of the game, or at least uh, as of this point. We'll tell you one more time about e &M Insurance run by Chris Marr out of North Wales, Pennsylvania. Both personal and business insurance from a property and casualty standpoint, he can take care of you. Chris is a wonderful partner of ours here at Bob Wong Sports. We're happy to have him. And if you are a LaSalle fan or just a lacrosse fan in general, pay it forward. They allow uh, us to do things like this here. We, they support the kids. So pay it forward and give them a, an opportunity to save you some money and wow you with their customer service. That's E&M Insurance, E-A-N-D-M Insurance.com. And go visit them. So, uh, Six on four, LaSalle. We mentioned it before the break. Um, what you want to do here, if you're Malvern, you want to get in a box. So basically just a box formation and stay tight. And if you're LaSalle, you want to be very patient. I mean, not too patient because of the score, but you certainly want to get a layup versus a jump shot uh, in a basketball analogy. Uh, 
Under two minutes to play. Here's your layup. Oh, that one hit the bottom of the pipe. Flag came in. Malvern came up with it, and there's your stoppage. Yeah, Pilling got crushed uh, on the doorstep there. Another penalty from behind. 145 to go. It looks like somebody's stick broke in the meantime. Coming off the field. Yeah, if you're Pilling there, it's a tough finish, uh, but that's one you need. Uh, he did draw the penalty, so now we're looking at six on three. Pretty rare. You'll see the defense in a triangle. Just kind of, you know, hoping for the best. LaSalle should absolutely capitalize here in the next 15 seconds. Lazaz scores. Yeah, not surprising. I mean, great shot by Lazaz, but anytime you're six on three, uh, you got to take advantage of it. So, buck 38 to go. LaSalle hanging in there. They're, uh, you know, certainly they're going to come up short here in this one, but. Happy to see them fighting all the way to the end, and we talked about these learning lessons for this team. As they take it with them the rest of the season, all their goals still in front of them after two really tough matchups over the span of the last week. And on Malvern's side, well, certainly they, uh, they continue to roll here, Mike, and they're going to be a tough out for anybody in the Interact and beyond. Yeah, the Interact matchups, uh, top five teams in the state right now. Malvern's won. I think Episcopal and Haverford are probably a close two and three. I think Radner is four and LaSalle's five. So we're looking at two of the top five teams in the state. Um, so, and uh, three of those teams are in the Interact, which are unable to compete for the state championship. So I see, I think down the road, hopefully Bob, you and I can do a game in the state playoffs where maybe LaSalle will see somebody like a Conestoga, a Radner, Garnet Valley or others, um, but not the Interact teams. Would love to do that. That would be exciting to see. 39 seconds left here in this one. Malvern Prep, of course, in no hurry. I actually had some friends ask me if, if uh, there was a line in this game, what would it be? I said it would be six. So the fact that uh, Malvern's winning by seven at the end of the day. Close, Bob, but I, I just missed it. <laughs> I'd expect Malvern to hold the ball here unless they're trying to let some of their subs go to the goal. But Ten seconds here. Coach Max, a classy guy. Coach O'Grady, most likely they'll just pull it out and hold it. Might be it here. Final few seconds, and Malvern Prep impressively puts 18 goals on the board and wins by seven against this LaSalle College High School team. The number five team in the country takes their claim as just that, very deserving of that ranking. Mike? Your final thoughts on this one? You know, I had a blast doing it, Bob. It, it ended, unfortunately, the way we thought it was going to end. Um, you know, I think the summary is it's a game of runs. LaSalle, LaSalle showed a bunch of toughness there with their youth. But uh, ultimately, the Malvern, you know, athleticism of some of their seniors is really what took over. Final score, Malvern 18, LaSalle 11. Thanks for being here with us. Mike Morcel on color commentary. I'm Bob Long. We'll get this up on the replay as well as quickly as we can. Thanks, everybody, for being with us. And we'll see you on another LaSalle College High School sporting event broadcast real soon.